Charles Dempsey Keen died April 4, 2003. He had recently completed the screenplay for his film adaptation of The Men Who Don't Fit In, a poem by Robert Service. There's a race of men that don't fit in, a race that can't stand still. So they break the hearts of kith and kin, and they roam the world at will. They range the field, and they rove the flood, and they climb the mountain's crest. Theirs is the curse of the gypsy blood, and they don't know how to rest. On March 28, 1938, Charles Keen was born in Leola, Arkansas. The son of apple farmers, Chuck grew up in Washington, but was not rooted there. He was an adventurer. Keen had already hitchhiked solo across the United States more than once by the age of 15 when he met Karen Wyatt. And it was kind of just love at first sight. And we went together for three years, and as soon as I graduated from high school, we got married. A man of many roles, Chuck was a marine, a hard rock miner, and a timber faller, which eventually brought him to the wilderness of Alaska in 1959, the first year of statehood. During this time, world-renowned writer and broadcaster Lowell Thomas visited Alaska during one of his many trips around the world. Inspired by Thomas, Keen decided that a career as a cinematographer would satisfy his wanderlust and need for adventure. He purchased a 16mm Bolex camera, and for his first project, he followed seal hunters to Mount St. Elias. Footage in hand and encouraged by friends and family, Keen traveled to California to approach the filmmakers at Disney. Roy Disney asked him what kind of light meter he had, and he says, oh, I don't have one. And he says, well, how do you know how to set your camera? And he said, well, I just put my arm out and, and go like this, and whatever my shade is, I figure out from there the, the, the light setting. Disney was willing to hire him on the spot, but he and his family would have to relocate to California. You love nature and you love animals, and, if, and, and, and that's your thing, and, if, and, and you certainly uh, can't, uh, can't get any experience like that in Hollywood. Unwilling to move, he worked as a freelancer for the Disney company, sending his reels to California and receiving critiques by telegram. In Hollywood, there's nothing like, like shooting up here. In 1964, he filmed the devastation of the great Alaska earthquake, flying around the state with Governor Bill Egan. He could see things that normal people can't see when it comes to taking a picture. He took excellent pictures. Keen thirsted for adventure. He purchased an around-the-world ticket. Passing through Vietnam, his life was changed once more. A cameraman was needed by the U.S. Department of Defense, and Keen was the man for the job. Over the next 11 years, Keen spent 44 months in Vietnam, logging 3,300 combat flight hours as a cameraman. Chuck actually claimed to have more flying time in Vietnam than any of the pilots. And he has probably the largest film library on the Vietnam War. His experiences in Vietnam influenced him greatly. In 1970, he created No Substitute for Victory, a documentary narrated by John Wayne, promoting a quick end to the war. Now, all men of goodwill certainly want peace. But do we want peace at any price, peace without freedom? Amid trips to the South Pacific, Keene created several films in Alaska. In 1969, he wrote and filmed the award-winning Johnnyko and the Kushtakov. In a 1972 letter to John Keene, Johnny Cash wrote, I think it's one of the finest films I've ever seen, and I especially appreciated it for making my boy so happy. Please keep up the good work. This country badly needs people like you who produce your kind of films. Much success. Sincerely, Johnny Cash. Keen had connections in California and was able to bring Hollywood actors to star in his movies, working alongside his friends and neighbors in Alaska. The experience I've had, you couldn't buy it for all the tea in China. Timber Tramps, Claws, and Challenge to be Free were all filmed in the wilds of Alaska. He wouldn't ask anybody to, um, to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. The stuntman was supposed to walk along the side of this creek and fall in. And, and this, was, uh, this was in 40 Below. And he chickened out, wouldn't do it. And believe it or not, Chuck Keen took his clothes. I got pictures of it. Chuck Keen uh, took all Mike Mazurki's clothes, put them on. And uh, I'll never forget it. He, he, uh, he did the scene and fell in that uh, icy cold water at 40 Below. Chuck Keen's experiences traveling the world led him to a vision of Juno's future as a tourist destination. 
Keene had purchased property on the top of Mount Juno in 1970 and dreamed of a tram leading to a beautiful alpine setting which would host a hotel, a two-story revolving restaurant, a museum, and a stage for performances as well as access to the mountain trails and the ice field. I mean, he was real good at filmmaking, but he wasn't the, the world's best businessman. You sort of hear that Chuck could be a kind and a generous man, but, and I'm sure he was, but in this period before the assembly, he was a very, very uh, unhappy man. Somehow he believed that, that perhaps the city was even conspiring to block him from building his tram project, from realizing this, this bold dream that he had. So just as an example, this is a typical size of a case file. If you want to do something complicated, this is uh, kind of like a small book. If you have something uh, that's kind of litigious or got appealed, went to court or something, you might get a case file this big. But, but these are Chuck Keene's case files. Okay, we've got these two, and then we have the overflow. Go up here, one box here, and we have another box here, and then we have more in storage. So he got to the point once, boy, he says, I, I'm, <laughs> he's they got a bunch of turkeys in there, don't know what they're doing. I'm, he says, I'm going to run. Uh, for, I'm going to run for the council. And so, and he, and he did. On this 4th of July, I sure hope folks in Juneau give a lot of thought to our independence and our freedom. Keen, visionary though he was, in all his life was never granted elective office by the voters of Juneau. <laughs> he didn't quite make it, but had he got in there, boy, they, he would have he, he really given them a bad time because he, he called a spade a spade and, and his views on politics were certainly a lot different from City Hall. In the spring of 1997, the Gold Belt Tram, a competing project, opened on Mount Roberts. A tram to the top of Mount Juno would have been a wonderful thing for Juno, but it never came to pass. And now that we have a tram to Mount Roberts, I doubt it ever will. I think he always felt that if he could build his tram, the other tram would just dry up and blow away. Although the Gold Belt Tram was being built that summer, Keene still had a passion in him for artistic pursuits and enjoyed returning to capture footage of the nature that always enticed him. In 2003, Keene suffered from a severe infection and was flown by medevac to the Veterans Hospital in Washington. On April 4th, Chuck Keene drifted to sleep while watching a film starring John Wayne.